David Fourcage is a professional technical trader with more than 15 years of experience in banks and brokerage firms through London and Paris. He also developed his own software, Highwave 3060. David, be very welcome. Thank you very much for being with us. Hi, thank you. Okay, have you taken all your life experience and put everything together in your software? Yes, absolutely. I was a software user before, but um, I'm, uh, I was also a global ma macro strategist and, and, uh, and broker, and I, I needed to have a clear-cut opinion about what the market is doing. I, I needed a market map, and uh, there, there was no um, software that delivers such, uh, such a view. So, yours does? Yes, absolutely. It does. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does, absolutely, yes. And um, you are a confess addict to top-down analysis. Yeah. Which advantage this technique has over pure technical analysis? Well, um, most of our uh, auditor now use uh, uh, single charts with uh, their preferred filters, their preferred um, uh, drawing uh, trend line and so on. This is a very micro view, and uh, if you do it this way, you, you miss uh, what the, the market is doing. So if you want to know, to know uh, about what the market is doing, you need to know uh, what is outperforming or underperforming, where they put their, their money, where big investors put their money or withdraw their money. So if you use a top-down approach, you are able to pick the right asset at the right moment. Because you are going from general to concrete assets, you mean? Yes, you need a market map. You need to know what the big ones are doing. And so which financial assets perform better under this technique? You can use these techniques in any kind of asset. I use it for um, uh, commodities, for stocks, of course. And uh, we don't call it for Forex the top-down approach, but there's uh, in our tools a way to understand what's happening uh, as well on the, on the Forex market. Okay, um, which one of them are your favorites? Because you've said that you look at stocks, commodities, also FX market. Mm -hmm. um, where do you feel more comfortable trading? My view is that uh, I should trade in the wake of big investors. It means that if the opportunity lies in the commodity market, then I focus on the, for on, on the commodity for market. If the opportunity lies on, uh, on the banking sector because they're buying it strongly, then I focus on the banking sector. It means that uh, when I open my uh, high wave on, uh, every morning, I don't have any idea about uh, what I want to trade. I, um, for me, it's not important to trade what I like to trade, but what the markets trade. And it could be in any kind of assets. So you don't look for any um, particular asset or, or value in the market, just what market does, yeah. and then you follow the trend. Absolutely. And no matter which one, which financial class are you trading. Uh, have a look so into... Because if, yeah. if, if I would like nowadays to know how to invest my money in mm -hmm. concrete companies, mm -hmm. could you give us your advice? Yeah, sure. Uh, for example, uh, over the last week, uh, the market li likes, for example, the Netherlands market. This is something we can pick in our uh, software. They like the Netherlands market and they like the health sector as well as the insurance sector. And when you use this top-down approach, it drives you towards the right asset. For example, the Netherlands market, the insurance sector. And we, uh, uh, a, few, a few days ago, we picked a very good asset, which name is ING. ING. ING Group mm -hmm. was a mm -hmm. very best performer. It outperformed uh, a lot of stocks. It means that the market was trading these stocks. So with our, our environment, I was, I was able to pick this asset, uh, although I'm not a fan of I ING. I, I don't know ING. Uh, I'm French, so <laughs> I, I prefer French stocks normally. But the software points out this solution, ING. Um, you combine top-down analysis with a global uh, macro view yeah. um, under, under this perspective. Do you believe that Europe is about to enter in the feared third recession? In the what? Sorry? In the feared third recession. Ah, third recession. Well, uh, if you take a look into surveys, uh, like uh, manufacturing surveys, like uh, services survey, as well as consumer confidence, you will be able to see that they're moving down, uh, they've been move, moving down since June, while the GDP is nearly around zero. Plus inflation uh, is uh, very, very low at 0.4%. Uh, it means that the main scenario now is driving us toward uh, a negative uh, GDP plus 
uh, maybe a, a kind of deflation. Um, but do you think that the ECB, the European Central Bank, has something left on their sleeves or, or is there any other um, action that Draghi could take uh, to prevent this third recession? Yes, he did. Um, he sent a, a very big signal. Basically, he said that he's going to increase the, the, the balance sheets from 2,000 uh, billion to 3,000 billion. And uh, there is a, a kind of LTR or program mm -hmm. as well as ABS. So it's a huge signal for the market that Draghi is, uh, will do the necessary to, uh, to counter this kind of uh, problem of recession as well as deflation. And what about the, the QA, the European QA mm. that most analysts believe that Draghi is about to launch maybe next year? Do you think that he's going to take this measure? He said he will do it. So I'm not, in, in a, I'm not talking about uh, Draghi, I'm not his spokesman, but uh, he said he, he has the will to do it. It's a huge signal, I repeat it. So um, I think uh, he, he, he eventually he, takes... he will take this measure if it's needed. Yes, absolutely. This is very different from uh, over a kind of uh, um, or former um, central bank governors in Europe. We are now moving from the orthodoxy to another mo model that is more practical, more uh, that is closer to um, to what's happening on GDP, on employment, and, and inflation. Um, let's continue with Europe. Um, the, the continent is through different political issues that it's also affecting on the economy and also weighing on the euro. Um, let's, about, uh, let's discuss about Ukrainian political situation, for example. How do you see it in the next months? Well, uh, if you take a look into uh, charts or uh, asset pricing, uh, you will see that political issue is not the main problem. Um, there is Ukraine, there was uh, Scotland and UK. And, now, and also Catalonia. Catalonia is sure. on the agenda, on the European Union agenda too. But I would add also the problem in Middle East. And you see that this is a big, big uh, ge geopolitical problem and political issue. But if you are looking into um, price action, you will see that the volatility remains very low. Mm -hmm. The Brent, I'm, I'm talking about the problem in the in Middle East now, we have a big, big problem, a political issue. Yeah. The Brent is going down, so it means that volatility remains low, Brent is going down. It means that political issues are not issue, actually. I see, I see. Yes. So markets are not being affected by these, these geopolitical conflicts at all? As long as you, uh, you, you take a look into um, uh, asset valuation and volatility, you will see that political issues are not issue. But the, the, but the main issue, by the way, that could um, yeah, trigger uh, um, different volatility and price action is about uh, central bank behavior. This mm. is the main issue. Could you, could you elaborate on this? Yeah, sure. Um, since 2007, since the crisis, uh, central banks are doing their, their best to, um, to, uh, to help uh, economy, employment, and so on. So the market focus focuses on what central banks are doing. This is the main issue. For example, uh, a few uh, months ago, the Federal Reserve we, mm -hmm. uh, said, we will go, uh, we, are, we are moving from the quantitative easing. It's nearly mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. While the, uh, central, the European Central Bank is launching a new QE. So there's a divergence, a political um, yes. divergence in between the two sure. central banks policies now. Yes, and this is the main market mover. Yeah, I see. I the see. Main That's what is going yes. to drive the markets next yes, year. Absolutely. The main market mover has been 2000, um, from 2007 has been the issue of central banks. Central banks. Not mm -hmm. over political issue. I, this is not my opinion. This is what I see when I look into price action and volatility. Yeah, actually the currency per the euro dollar mm. uh, moves in, in a high range when each central bank, um, any of them, takes a decision or, or releases a speech. So do you think that this divergence in between their policies is going to continue weighing on the euro dollar too? Do you see the currency pair falling to 1.20 or below that level? Well, well not so far not from 120 and uh, from this summer we see that uh, it, uh, from this summer we were at uh, 135 mm -hmm. and now we, lo we are now close to 128. So it, it could go very fast and we're, we're not so far from 120. And of course... The, um, In your view, which level could it reach, let's say, 
uh, till December? Well, it depends on um, what their uh, uh, what central bank are, are going to mm -hmm, say about mm -hmm. their policy. Uh, if uh, the market uh, feels that the Fed is going to rate hikes more quickly and uh, more firmly, mm -hmm. it could go uh, even lower. While the uh, the ECB is entering a quantitative easing policy, so it depends of on on, on the, what they are going to say. And million dollar question, and that's going to be my last question. Mm. When the Federal Reserve is going to start hiking rates, they, some voices said that spring 2015 is going to be the period of the year, but others um, believe that it won't be until uh, the end of 2015. What do you believe? I believe what the market said. So uh, if you take a look into Fed fund futures, the market was pricing a probability of a rate hike before 2005, uh, 2050, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, at 43 mm percent. -hmm. This was in June, and now the market, regarding this Fed fund futures and probability, the market is pricing a rate hike uh, by uh, July 2015. Uh, um, as um, um, more than 50 percent. So now the market uh, feels that, that the probability um, to, uh, for a rate hike before uh, July 2015, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, there's more than uh, one than chance. Than before, uh, I yes. see, I see. Yes. But it's still a 50 percent of the, of the market it's that believes that the other 50 percent. Yes, but if you like, uh, take a look into, into the trend, it was 43 percent mm -hmm. in June and now it's nearly uh, 52, 53 percent. Mm -hmm. so, and it's uh, going to increase. The trend signals that the, the number of market participants that believe mm -hmm. the Federal Reserve is going to hike rates before summer is going to increase over the next Absolutely. month. That's what you meant. Okay. This is what we can see in the Fed Fund Future uh, market pricing. Okay, David, thank you very much for your view on markets and central bank policies. And we are going to stay really, really focused on these central bank policies divergence for the next months. Thank you very much. Thanks.